Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial I want to show you how to use the online statistics application StatCrunch to compare the means of several different groups on a single quantitative uh, outcome. Uh, for this particular comparison we're going to be using a one-way analysis of variance. Uh, if you have just two groups you can use a t-test, but when you have more than two you usually need to go to an analysis of variance also called an ANOVA for analysis variance or ANOVA depending on however you want to pronounce it. For this I'm going to be using a data set in StatCrunch that I put there is called seeding choice versus GPA uh, and then I have a couple of versions of it. This one's for three rows with text and indicator columns. You can get it by going to explore uh, data and then typing this in. It'll come up. It's pretty easy and it's got this little picture right over here. But um, before I do the analysis, uh, something I tell my students all the time is you got to do the graphics first. And I have done that. I'm going to show you a few charts I've done. Uh, first off, I did a bar chart to show that there are 10 people in each of three different rows. That's pretty easy. In fact, let me just show you. The way the data were set up originally in this is they had 10 scores. These are GPAs for students in the front row, middle row, and back row. However, for some of these analyses, they need to be set up differently. So I have another video where I've showed how to stack the data. So it creates a single, um, two columns, one that says what row they're in, another one with their actual score. Anyhow, I also did a box plot. Whenever you're using a quantitative variable, this is a good way to check for the shape of the distribution and for the uh, presence of outliers, which can cause real problems. Anyhow, from this, you see that the people in the front row generally have a higher uh, distribution of scores. This is the median, 50% or above or below. This is the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile, or actually this is the 75th and this is, uh, whatever. This is the middle 50% of the scores. Uh, and it's higher than the middle 50%. And these lines, which are called whiskers, go to the highest and lowest non-outlying scores. Uh, I have similar thing down here. This is means plot. Now this one's based on percentiles, and that's about the 50th percentile. This is the mean, and you know it. It can be slightly different. If the distributions are symmetrical, they'll be the same. But if they deviate from that at all, then then they're different. Anyhow, this is the mean for the people in the front row. You can see it's much higher than the mean for the people in the middle and the back row, which are basically the same. These lines are called 95% confidence intervals, which indicate the reasonable range of variation for the uh, numbers that if you were to get another sample, another similar sample, for instance, people in the front row, their mean could be as high as this or could be as low as this, um, but it rarely overlaps with this one. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to show you now how to do a one-way analysis of variance, which get the numbers to back up our little conclusion here that this group is much higher and these groups are lower, but the same as each other. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to go to stat ANOVA, or analysis of variance. I'm going to do a one-way because I have only one factor, the, the row that they're sitting in. So I click that. And uh, there are two different ways to do it. One is if you have your data in the separate columns, the way that it originally came, you can do it that way. I click that and then I shift click to get all three and just hit calculate. All right. And what this tells me, I'm going to bring up the charts again is this gives me the means for each of the groups. So the front row has a mean of 3.44, and that makes sense. You can see that about right. Reduce it to like two decimals. Uh, this table here is the actual inferential statistic, the analysis of variance table. And this has to do with how spread out things are. This has to do with a little bit like the standard deviation. Uh, this one right here, the F statistic, I believe the F comes from Fisher, the guy who uh, created this test. But um, anyhow, we have a number here, and the one you're probably most interested in is this last one right here, the p-value, which gives the probability level or the significance level for the result. And you're usually looking for a number that is under less than 0.05, um, because 0.05 represents a 5% chance of getting a result that big as a false positive if it is true that there is no difference between the groups. And so this one said, if these three groups actually have the same mean, the probability of getting a difference this big through random error is 0 0.0026. Now that's a proportion and it needs to be, uh, you need to turn it into percentage. 0 0.1 is 10%, 0 0.01 is 1%, 0 0.0026 is a quarter of 1%. It's a very low chance. And it was just, 
there's a very strong convention that anything less than 5% is taken as statistically significant. So what we have here is a statistically significant difference between these three groups. Now, even though it's pretty obvious what's going on right here, that these two are down low next to each other and this one's up high, there is um, room for ambiguity sometimes in the analysis of variance. And so because the analysis of variance doesn't actually tell you which group is higher, simply that the means are different or in some combination there is difference, uh, you often do what's called a post hoc test. That means after the fact. And uh, StackCrunch gives you one option. I'm going to go back to options and edit. This is where I set things up in the first place, right? I'm going to come down here and click this one. The Tukey, that's for John Tukey, wonderful statistician, the guy who gave us the box plots that are, that are up here. HSD is for honestly significant difference. It's kind of a funny way to put it, but anyhow, there it is. And when I click that, the table over here is going to change a little bit. You'll see it. It's going to add some stuff at the bottom. Okay, now StackCrunch does the confidence, the post hoc in a kind of a funny way. It does it with confidence intervals. Uh, kind of wish they didn't do it that way, but anyhow, all this stuff up here is exactly the same as it was before, and this down here says this is the difference between the GPA of the people in the front row uh, and the people in the middle row. The people in the middle row have a GPA that's on average 0.977 GPA points lower than the people in the front row. That's the difference between this and this. It's about one point. Um, I'm sorry, this is a confidence interval, so that is going to go from 0.97 to 0.099. It could be small, it could be big, but the point here is these are both negative, uh, that the front people in the front always have a higher GPA than the people in the middle. And similarly, the back, you see that they're negative both times. Again, the people in the front always have a higher GPA than the people in the back. On the other hand, when you compare the people in the middle and the back, sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive, uh, which means there's no reliable difference here. So anyhow, what this one tells us is that it, it is in fact the people in the front who have the reliably higher score and that these two are similar to each other. Fine. I want to show you one other way of... Um, doing the analysis of variance, because you saw over here that I had the, the data set up as either three different columns, which is how I got it from another data set, or I stacked the columns to make one column that said whether they're in the front row or the middle row or the back row, and the GPA is right next. Uh, this stuff comes up in a, another video I'm going to make, so we can ignore it for now. But this is split columns, and this is stacked columns. And I want to show you that you can do the same analysis really easily. Oops, sorry. You can do the same analysis really easily with the split columns as well. I'm sorry, with the stack columns. In fact, if we go to options and go back here, you see here it says compare selected columns, and I did that. Well, now I'm just going to do compare values in a single column. In this case, the, the responses of the outcome variable is GPA, so I just drop down and select that. And this one, the row is the factor. That's the thing that separates the groups one from another. So I go out here to row, and... Uh, and you know what it comes out? It's exactly the same. The only difference is right up here. It's this time, instead of saying they were in different columns, it says responses are stored in GPA and factors are stored in row. And I get the exact same conclusion, again, that the people in the front row have, um, on average, a significantly higher GPA than the people in the middle or the back row. And the p-value is 0 0.0026, which means there's less than... There's a quarter of a percent of a chance of something like this happening through random sampling if, in fact, the groups are different. Anyhow, so that's it for right now, and I hope that's been helpful. Thank you.